Coach Buddy software has been designed to collect statistics on an individual player's performance during a game of football. Using your phone, tablet or iPad, this easy to use software will allow players and coaches to track performance and set goals. This demonstration will teach you how to successfully use the software. The cursor throughout the demonstration takes the place of your finger. On first entering the software, you will be greeted by a start screen requiring information about the player, field size and running direction. Tapping on the information icon will take you to a page that explains how to use the software. Swipe anywhere and you will return to the start screen. Under player and game description, tap in the black box and type the player's name, opposition and date. This information will assist you later when looking for statistics relating to this game. For the software to collect accurate data on the distance the player travels, it is important to enter the correct size of the pitch. Tap on the first box and enter the length of the field, and then on the second box to enter the width. The software needs to know the direction the player is running in the first half. When you know, tap on either the running right to left, or running left to right box. As in a game, the software will automatically change the direction the player runs in the second half. Once you have completed the information, tap on the Create Game box. You are now ready to start tracing the player. Don't begin until such time as the referee commences the game. As the ref blows to start, tap the Begin First Half box. This will start the game clock and remove the time box from the screen. Tap on the screen in the corresponding position to where the player you are following is standing. As the player moves, record that movement by tapping on the field. If you swipe the screen, the statistics box will be shown. Here you can see how the software is measuring the distance the player has travelled. When the player receives the ball, swipe to the player from the area the ball travelled. A blue line will appear indicating the distance and direction from which the ball was received. Also, the player will change from a yellow to a brown colour and a ball icon will appear. The changing colour and the icon indicate that the player is now in possession of the ball. As the player distributes the ball, swipe away from the player in the direction and to the length that the ball is played. Once you remove your finger, a prompt box emerges asking whether the pass was successful or unsuccessful. If the pass went to a teammate, tap on successful, or if possession was turned over, tap unsuccessful. Once you have done this, you will be asked whether the distribution came from a pass or a header. Tap on the box to answer. Continue to tap on the screen as the player moves around the field. Recording the player running or dribbling in possession is very similar. Swipe the ball into the player from where it came. Again, the ball icon will appear to show the player is now in possession. Now tap on the field in the corresponding areas the player dribbles with the ball. You will notice that the player continues to be shown in brown and that the ball icon stays. Once the player distributes the ball, swipe out from the player in the direction and the length of the pass. Follow the prompt boxes as before. Shooting for goal is recorded in the same manner as passing the ball. Swipe the ball to the player as before so the player in possession icon appears. If the player's shot is on target, swipe the pass into the blue area shown as the goal. A prompt box appears asking whether the shot was successful or unsuccessful. If a goal is scored, tap the successful box, but if the shot is saved, tap unsuccessful. Once you have done that, another box will appear asking you whether the shot was with the foot or head. If a shot at goal is off target and wide of the goal, swipe the ball to the player placing him in possession, and then swipe away to the side of the goal following the shot. Again, a prompt box will appear asking whether the shot was successful or unsuccessful. On this occasion, unsuc unsuccessful should be tapped. Another prompt box will be shown giving you a number of options including shot on goal. Tap this option. To correct a mistake, hold down the last area you tapped. A 
prompt box will emerge asking whether you wish to undo. Tap this prompt box and your mistake will disappear. The software allows you to record the set plays that your player takes. For a throw in, hold your finger down on the side of the pitch in the vicinity of where the throw in takes place. A throw in prompt box will appear. Tap the box and the software will automatically take the player to this area. Once the throw in has been taken, swipe out from the player in the direction and distance of the actual throw. You will again be asked whether the throw in was successful or unsuccessful. Free kicks are the same. Hold your finger down on the area of the field your player is to take the free kick from. When you tap the free kick prompt box, the software will take the player directly to that area. Again, swipe out as before and follow the prompts. For a corner kick, do the same. If the player is to take a penalty, hold your finger down on the penalty spot. Again, a prompt will appear. Take penalty. Tap the box and the player will be taken directly to the spot. Swipe the penalty as you would sh a shot and follow the prompts. When the ref blows for the end of the first half, swipe your finger anywhere on the field. The time box will re-emerge with the clock running. Tap end first half and another prompt box will be shown asking you to confirm the end. Tap confirm. The time box returns to not in play and the clock returns to zero. The software is now ready to record the second half. During the halftime break, you can view the first half statistics of your player by tapping on stats within the time box. To return to the time box for the start of the second half, either tap on back to field or tap on the field behind the statistics box. As the referee blows to commence the second half, tap on the begin second half box. This will restart the game clock and remove the time box from the screen. Tap on the screen where your player commences and then continue tapping to record his movement around the field. Remember, the software has automatically identified the player is now running in the opposite direction from the first half. Capturing all statistics is the same. At the end of the game, swipe anywhere on the field to bring back the time box. In normal circumstances, you will need to then tap on the end game box. However, if the game is going to extra time, tap end second half. This will allow you to capture the statistics of your player during the extra period of the game. Once the end game box has been tapped, you will be asked to confirm. Tap on confirm. The game is now completed and the software will take you to the statistics page. From the data you entered, the CoachBuddy software is able to collate many interesting statistics. The stats page has been designed to group together similar type information. Vital stats can be found under the headings Distance and Possession, Passes and Interaction, and Free Kicks and Goals. Immediately after you have completed a game, the software will show the stats from that game. To change the game you wish to view, tap in the box marked Currently Viewing Game and a drop box appears. Scroll through the drop box until you find your game of interest. Tap on that game and the software will then display the stats. Each game that you enter will be automatically recorded and held for future reference. The stats gathered under the distance and possession tab are self-explanatory and relate to the full game. You can better understand each stat by tapping on the one you are interested in. For example, tap on distance travelled. A splatter pattern emerges showing you the areas of the field the player travelled throughout the entire game. The software places both halves on top of each other, so you are looking at the player running left to right for the entirety of the game. Tap outside of the splatter pattern box to remove it from the screen. Tapping on the possession stats will also give you a splatter pattern. Look closely at the lines. On the end of each line is a pinhead. The pinhead indicates the player's position when possession was gained. The line indicates from where the player travelled directly prior to receiving the ball. The Passes and Interaction tab breaks down the player's possession to, into more defined actions. 
All offloads are recorded as either passes or headers, completed or incomplete. To further enhance the stat, the third of the field has been identified where the action was completed. In other words, if the player passed the ball from his own defensive third to a teammate in the attacking third, the stat would be shown as a completed pass in the attacking third. A splatter pattern giving you a visual reference to the stat can again be seen by tapping on the line describing the action. Knowing that the software displays the entire game running left to right allows you to determine whether the player's passes or headers are penetrating forward passes or sideways or even backwards. The pinhead on this occasion represents the field position where the ball was passed to and the line, the distance and from where it came. The last tab, free kicks and goals, records all the set plays that the player has undertaken during the game. This area also holds the shooting stats including the number of goals scored.